folks, Craig here, and welcome to my annual game room tour for 2013. Uh, this game room tour comes off uh, a making of a game room video series I did earlier this year when I put this room back together after dismantling it. So if you'd like to watch me putting this room together, uh, you can check out the links in the video description. If you'd like to see past year's game room tours, you can check those out in the video description as well, see how the room has changed over time. Kind of going around the room right now so you can get a feel of it before we go into some detail. And my goal this time around while putting this together was to make something that was sort of, I don't know, comfortable, wasn't like too boring or, or museum-like, but also give people something to look at at every corner. Because people love to come in here and just kind of poke around. They don't even necessarily like to play games. So we're going to start over here on this wall. And there's the door right there. And this, these are the two primary game shelves. Over here in the corner, uh, my first press badge. There I am, TV and Lust. That was for PAX East. And uh, the camera doesn't want to cooperate. I'm sorry. It doesn't handle low light so well. And uh, not a whole lot of natural light comes in here because I have a forest right outside my window. Uh, this is a uh, Club Nintendo platinum prize, some pins I got, and I just hung them up on the wall here. Some tabs and some tags. Uh, down here is this Majora's Mask painting I did. I did a whole video on that if you'd like to check it out. I got nowhere to put it because it's kind of big. Uh, over here on the shelf, up top, uh, some collectibles, not too many, but just a few, some few cool things. Uh, this is a Skull Kid statue from First Four Figures, which is worth a lot more than what I paid for. I paid about $100 for it. And for a while there, they're going for like $800 on eBay. They've since come down. They go for about $500 now. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that definitely skyrocketed in value. Uh, some Star Fox dog tags uh, for the release of Star Fox 64 3D. Uh, these are Lord of Vermillion game cards. Lord of Vermillion is a Square Enix arcade game in Japan, and you use the cards to play. Um, you put them out on the battlefield, and the game can read the cards, and you can play. It's pretty neat. I think they're on like a version 3 at this point, if I'm not mistaken. This is a Sonic the Hedgehog statue for his anniversary. Uh, I also won that in Japan at Sega's Joypolis arcade uh, amusement park thing. This shelf is mostly modern games, except for the top here. A little out of sync, but uh, these cases are taller, and this shelf area is just, just accommodates them. Just, just right, so they fit there, which is nice. We got some Sega CD games here. Chuck Rock, Dragon's Lair, Final Fight CD, Sonic CD. I was going to go slowly over some of these here, so you can get a feel of my collection if you haven't been keeping up my videos over the years. Saturn. Long box, PlayStation 1, of which there are uh, three different kinds of boxes. This Dark Stalkers here with this bumpy plastic spine, cardboard front. And I think In Hunt is in the same way. Ridge Racer is hard, translucent plastic like the Sega Saturn cases. And then this one's all cardboard wipeout. So that's weird. Um, <laughs> another Sega CD game, Solfees. Uh, Japanese Sega Saturn games. And then down here is my Wii collection. I do really like the Wii. I like collecting for it. I like all the oddball games on it. Uh, and then Wii U. I'm missing a couple games. I lent them out to a friend. So this isn't exactly all my games, but it's you know, most of them. I think she has like three of them or something. But I do like the Wii. I think it's a cool offbeat library. Down here we have the Xbox 360. Of the 360 and the PS3, the 360 was my preferred system for this past generation. I prefer the controller, I prefer the online. I don't prefer the build quality. <laughs> Uh, system's kind of a piece of junk. And then down here we have PS3, although I do own many PS3 games. Some more special editions off to the side. And then some strategy guides. And I still buy these sometimes. I still like the hardcover ones. They're quite nice. Uh, I think I'll have to... <laughs> I got a big futon here in the middle. I don't know how I'm going to film this. And then in the middle I have some toys, some little figurines, which are sometimes fun to have in a collection. And then over here, 
this is Retro Games. And up top, this is a collectible coin I got pre-ordering Super Mario Galaxy. Uh, this is uh, Persona Music Live. I paid a lot, I paid like $80 for like this DVD. But it is pretty cool, it's really cool, and there are videos of this on YouTube if you just look up Persona Music Live, some, some fun stuff on there. A sealed Majora's Mask promotional video we got from a viewer. And then um, these still sealed Toho and Lugia figurines from uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Up top, uh, PS1 games. I don't have that many. Um, my collection's a bit varied, I think. I think it's a decent collection for this size, specifically. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of variety in there. Mostly, like, role-playing stuff and action-adventure stuff, because that's where my tastes are. But, you know, I didn't play a lot of PlayStation 1 in the heyday. I don't have a lot of nostalgia for it, and I don't feel a lot of the games from that era uh, age so well, so if you're playing them for, like, the first time now, they're not quite as good. So, um, Japanese Dreamcast, which is mainly Eldorado Gate games, and then Lack of Love. And then some other CD-based games here, CDI and uh, TG16, and I think the rest of these are... 3D up. I moved down to the PS2. I had about as much luck with the PS2 as a piece of hardware as I had with the Xbox 360. Uh, I'm currently on my third PS2. But no one can argue that the library was fantastic. Brilliant stuff. And then the original Xbox. Which I really like. There's actually some really unique stuff on here that was not released on the other two platforms. You have to go digging for it sometimes, but it's there. And um, a lot of multi-platform releases were best on the original Xbox. Then we have GameCube, which believe it or not, um, you may not believe it based on the size of the collection. Because uh, I had traded some of the games over the years, but this was my preferred console from that era. Not sure why. You know, Nintendo games always appeal to me, so, you know, I always go tend to go gravitate towards the Nintendo consoles first. Uh, here we have boxed NES. And I have a few of those. Giving away the box Famicom. Or Super Famicom, rather. And I love this Lady Stalker box. I love this logo here, which is a high heel shoe and a sword. I think that's fantastic. And many of these are... Um, Megami Tensei games or spin-offs like Last Bible and Majin Tensei and stuff like that. And then boxed Super Nintendo. Very modest collection, but uh, I think some really good games in there. And then boxed Nintendo 64, which I have been working on lately. Because uh, it's, you know, a console that, you know, I played a lot, quite a bit in my youth, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, these just fit here. These are my two boxed Famicom games, which are just uh, Mega Ten games. It's Megami Tensei 1 and 2. Master System games. Genesis. Sorry for the low lighting. I apologize. I aim to get a new camera in the future. They're expensive. I play a lot of Genesis as a kid, but, you know, as an older collector, I've, I've really appreciated some of the games on there. And then, uh, 32X. And then over here are just some, uh, my box Atari 2600 games. I have Star Raiders and Race, which are, which are branded Sears telegames, but they're, they're 2600 games. They come with, like, special controllers. And then I have Moon Control, which is one of my favorite games from the era. And then over here, that was, I don't know if you heard that crack, that was my knee. <laughs> uh, these are, like, limited editions and box sets and things like that. Up top, some of my more valuable uh, special editions. We have Sega Gaga and Della Jet Set Radio for Dreamcast, Japanese. And Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch on PS3, which became quite valuable the moment I bought it because uh, some screw-ups at Namco Bandai and Digital River. And then these are special edition hardware. I have Wonderful World Edition DS Lite, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Edition 3DS LL, my Pikachu Edition 3DS XL, Princess Peach 3DS, and then this Famicom version of the Game Boy Micro. Not not uh, necessarily too big on special edition of systems, but I think I have uh, some nice consoles here. And then these are mostly most of my like uh, box sets and stuff. 
And at first they fit in here in, in some, <laughs> in some with some rhyme or reason, but now they're just sort of stacked in there like Tetris boxes. I think you can see most of them. come over here and this is a Bioshock Infinite poster I got well before release it is signed by Ken Levine which I wasn't too thrilled about the game but this art is pretty nice and it's cool that it's signed by him these are sound uh, soundtracks video game soundtracks this Persona 3 one does not fit <laughs> in there um, but I've done a video about my soundtracks so there's some stuff some good stuff in there Uh, down here, some big box special editions, Killzone 3, Gears 3, uh, Tekken 6, Bioshock 2, Halo Reach. And then on top, um, this is this is a PC game. I have it out because it's part of my Indie Zero collection. I have every game made by the studio Indie Zero. And then I also have this PC game out because I just thought it was really cool to have the original SimCity. So that's just on top there. Up top, I have some lights. One is burnt out. I have, I have a replacement bulb. I don't know how to replace it, though. And um, my video game hat collection. Um, I think all of which are officially licensed. Uh, it's Mario, Sonic, Junpei from Persona 3, Scribblenauts Rooster hat. Uh, this Tanuki hat, which Charlie from the Jurassic Channel sent me from Australia. Actually, that might not be officially licensed. That's okay, it looks nice. This Luigi hat, and then uh, Zelda Ezlo hat. Coming back down this way. This is what I mean by like I can't get natural light in here. It's like it's like the goddamn Amazon out there. Uh, this is my old iMac. In fact, the bulk of my videos that you've seen on this channel have been edited on this iMac. This thing I, is like two gigs of RAM and like uh, I forget the I forget the processor speed. It's just it's just a it's just a core duo though. Um, but man, it it really did the job. It really did the job for for years. It was only into it was only earlier this year where it started to to flounder and um and, and that's why I tend not to get too worked up about specs you know when people complain about oh the Wii isn't very powerful and just at the end of the day if it does what I want or and or needed to do I don't really think it matters and so you can laugh at the pathetic two gigs that this thing has there are cell phones that have more memory uh than this computer um it's still made a, a ton of videos so you know numbers aren't always everything it still gets the job done Mainly, though, it's put out the pasture, so mainly it just does Netflix and music now. And then underneath here, um, these are art books and uh, comic books and uh, things like that. There's about Hyrule Historias in here. We have the art of Epic Mickey, Bioshock Infinite. I have the a Link to the Past you know, manga in there. A bunch of stuff, some Persona stuff. Okami Complete Works, some good stuff in there. Up here on this wall, the low lighting's gonna affect us. Might go out of focus. I apologize. It's a really cool key charm. I got this. I want to say in a toy store in Ginza. Uh, this is done in that weird Kingdom Hearts Cupid doll style that uh, Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy also had. And this is Zaz from Final Fantasy 13. He's got even a uh, little chogubo in his hair up there. I thought that was really cool. It was super expensive. It was like 20 bucks. Got these at the Pokemon Center. Uh, these pins. This, you know, uh, like 8 bit keychain. It's pretty cool. And this is the Final Fantasy trading card game, which never came out here, but uh, was a thing in Japan. It still might be a thing. Uh, I bought this at the same toy store I bought that at. And I just bought this entry set. And um, I don't think the game is terribly complicated from what I can understand from the rules. I'm not fluent in Japanese, so can't say for sure. And this is my carded. Uh, e-reader collection. I have most of them. I'm missing a few. Uh, I think the ones I'm missing I have like loose in packs, but I don't have them on the cards. And I like to get the whole NES collection eventually. I'm missing a few more. But that's pretty fun. I like collecting offbeat things like that. That's one of the things I like about my collection. Game Boy, uh, Game Boy Pocket, Gold Game Boy Camera, and uh, an e-reader, Virtual Boy, Game Boy Advance SP, that's the second model with the actual backlit screen. Uh, in here, loose Game Boy card carts from various Game Boy models. And then other handheld games, Game Gear, Gamecom, Wonder Swan, 
uh, Neo Geo, Virtual Boy, another e-reader. <laughs> uh, this is where Low Light might get us again. But uh, I love handhelds. I love collecting for handhelds. I love handheld systems. Just the idea that these whole worlds can fit in your pocket. It's just so, so cool to me. So we have a Game Gear. We have two models of Lynx, N-Gage, uh, Nomad, Neo Geo, Pocket Color. And then a bunch of box stuff down here. Microvision, Wonder Swan, a couple of Wonder Swans, a couple of Game Boy Colors. Uh, one of these Mattel LED games. I got basketball. Football was pretty ubiquitous back in the 70s. Pokemon Mini, some Game & Watches. This real Ghostbusters LCD game I had when I was a kid. This is not mine from when I was a kid. I bought this on eBay and an uncontested auction for just a few dollars, so uh, I couldn't pass it up. A little bit of nostalgia. And then some more stuff down here. There's like uh, chargers and cords and stuff. My GameCom box. And one of these set-top games, which I think are really, really cool. Um, James from the Chipsters channel. He does um, he does Easter egg hunting now, which is really cool. It's cool that he was able to change his channel completely around and still uh, maintain success, which I think is great. But he used to do a lot of great reviews, just old stuff he had in his loft, and um, he used to do a lot of these tabletop games, which I thought was really cool. So you should check out his channel. But um, those things are pretty fun. Unique piece of video game history, I think. Uh, this is a picture of Tokyo which I am in love with, and I love Tokyo, and I visit as much as I can. Tokyo Tower, specifically. And then, this building right here is the hotel I stay in. You can throw a rock and hit Tokyo Tower. Uh, these are uh, my uh, hooked-up video game systems, so Vectrex, Sega Saturn, 3DO, a Sega Genesis monstrosity, including 32X and Sega CD. These are my Skylanders, I have no place for these, so... I have one from like every element and all the add-on levels from the first game. I don't have anything from Skylanders Giants. Uh, my original Xbox, my PS2, my Neo Geo, and my TG16. And this pot! I made this in ceramics class in high school. So, uh, I don't even know how old this thing is. I think it's gotta be like 15 years old. <laughs> made it look like a helium jar, hyrulean jar. I used to keep coins in here. Oh, it's pretty neat. Over here, um, up here is Majora's Mask art print, which is signed and numbered by the artist. Pretty low number. It's five, five of two hundred. I thought that was pretty nice. Majora's Mask being my favorite game. Uh, this is my plush collection, which I never thought I'd have as many plushes as this. But uh, sometimes you just get a bunch of them, and they're pretty fun to have. Oh. I really like this vampire Pikachu. I got in Halloween at the Pokemon Center. These are controllers, cords, things like that. My Atari shot glasses and my Mario 2, I don't know, beer mug. Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, Dreamcast, NES, Super Famicom, uh, GameCube with Game Boy Player. Oh, and there's an Atari 2600 under there. And of course, all hooked up, ready to go to this lovely 20 inch CRT. This is not my only TV. As you can see, there's no th Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 or Wii U in here. It's hooked up to a 50 inch plasma downstairs in my living room. I play old games on a CRT, like you're supposed to. My Animal Crossing clock, the only clock in here. And my mugs, my Mega Man Energy Take, and my Retro Gamer mug is composed of different retro sprites. AV selectors back here. And these shells over here, these are all handheld games. This portion right here, it's all Ghostbusters stuff. You know, a nice little personal touch, not completely game related, but I do love Ghostbusters. And the PKE meter, replica PKE meter you saw in the beginning of the video. And my PSP, my DSi XL for quick access. A Secret of Mana postcard sent to me by Splatter Trigger from here on YouTube. Promotional Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy music player from GameStop. Uh, that is, um, oh man, Diamond Trust of London Special Edition, which actually has diamonds in it, real diamonds in it. I did an unboxing for that if you'd like to see it. Uh, my, uh, my Okamiden, Celestial Bush Stylus, my Wappy Dog, being a big DS collector. And Pokemon Mini. Engage, Neo Geo, Pocket Color, Game Gear. Um, those are both Japanese. I don't own too many box Game Gear games. Two Japanese and one American, I believe. 
Uh, Wonder Swan. Lynx, lots of Lynx. I really like the Lynx. Nice little powerhouse, actually. Game Gear, GameCom, Manuals, Vita. And then this is all Game Boy. And I want to do a video about the different types of video game cartridges, uh, video, uh, different types of like Game Boy video game cartridges and boxes, because there's so many different kinds of cartridges and boxes on this system. And then uh, this starts off, this is all Japanese here, and then it breaks into uh, Western Game Boy releases, Western Game Boy Color, and Western Game Boy Advance. And Mario Party E back there because I like the e-reader, and that's an Indie Zero game. We have the DS, and I have over 200 DS games. That goes right across there. I don't want to move the camera around too much, because it's going to go out of focus. And a tiny cartridge guy there. I love tiny cartridge, great website. More DS. Oh, and what do you know? There's... There's more DS, no kidding. And then 3DS, which is quickly becoming like I think this is I think the 3DS is my favorite current generation system. So far, of course I haven't played a Xbox One or PS4, but I do love my portables and it has a great library. And then PSP, which I think also has a terrific library, but a lot of people discounted it. And then this <laughs> pink ottoman right here is my girlfriend's. I think it has her own video game stuff in it. But Use it for like a footrest. This closet here, which I've actually in all of my videos never opened this closet, but I will do it now. And you can see up here, if it focuses, there's just a ton of crap. And just boxes and boxes. This is Fairchild Channel F, a Famicom, my light. That, that light blazes on me when I record. I'm sweating balls right now because there's no AC in here. I'm dying drenched in sweat. You guys have no idea. Well, a ColecoVision, Atari. What is that, 5200? A new one. Just boxes and boxes of stuff. And clothes. I gotta keep my clothes in here so my girlfriend can keep her clothes in, in the closet in our bedroom. Bomberman, oh come on, cooperate. Bomberman painting up there. I'm sorry for all the out of focus stuff. It makes me feel unprofessional, but I suppose it's not a very professional channel anyway. It's just for fun. Uh, my girlfriend got this for me the first Christmas we were together. Uh, I think it's called Relationship Counseling or something. She got it from Fan Gamer. That's really cool. Legend of Zelda manga set with Ganondorf keeping it <laughs> all propped up. Uh, this was a Dragon Quest 25th Anniversary Blind Box. I got this, I don't know, pink and blue dragon in it. This is my Joy Polish ticket in Japan. It's like a plastic card. It's pretty cool. And this is my Yakuza pen. Uh, I was in, what is it called? Kurabukiya in Akiba in Japan. And they had some Yakuza stuff, but none of it, like, I really wanted to pay money for, you know? Like, I love Yakuza. It's one of my favorite video game series. So I just bought this pen <laughs> for, like, $10. Um, and here we have some loose cart stuff. So, NES, SNES, N64. I don't really buy loose carts anymore. Like, they're, you know, they're given to me. It's greatly appreciated, and I'll play them, and I will keep them. But I go for box stuff now. I like the preservation of box stuff. Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, Master System, Atari 2600, Atari 5200, uh, ColecoVision, and Jaguar. And then these aren't so much loose as just no other place for them. So we got uh, we got uh, Neo Geo, one loose Magician Lord there, and then uh, 3DO and the Splatter Trigger Skull here. Ah, so there you have it, folks. It's my game room in 2013. It might actually be smaller next year. I am. Oh, I have this Penny Arcade blanket. Let me tell you about my 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 futon here. It's my girlfriend's futon, so now I have stuff to sew. It's cool. And I have a Penny Arcade blanket. I don't really read Penny Arcade, but it's a nice blanket. And I have this shell. This Koopa shell. This is really cool. I thought that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to get rid of some of the stuff, particularly stuff in the closet that I don't use. Like, you know, I've always thought of myself as a collector. And I thought, well, I should, you know, I'll get into Atari Jaguar. That's what collectors do, right? 
but I don't use it. I don't even really like the system. <laughs> so I'm going to pare down some stuff. But before I did that, I uh, thought I'd give you a, a, a tour of this room at its peak. Oh, yeah, I forgot this art piece here. I, got this, I believe I got this on Fangamer. It's called System Wars. And it's just like all different consoles and handhelds and their controllers. It's actually pretty neat. So I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, you guys take it easy.